Hey, all right. So I've had this idea for a long time and I've been kind of like running it around in my head over and over again and researching stuff. But over here, I've got this camera. I like literally just got this camera. So I have this problem. In my barn, I have some cameras that are used to like check on the horses at night and stuff. It should be no big deal. But one of the things that really bothers me about it is that they are tied to a cloud subscription service. And you cannot untie them. Like it's, they're, they go out of their way to make that not possible. Like I'd rather be able to access the cameras uh, locally. And I think that I can get them local if I just switch out the cameras. So like I said, I did a bunch of research on, on cameras and stuff. And this one, I have high hopes. Enough, enough that I actually like ordered it, right? So this is it. This is a Tapo outdoor security camera. It's super cheap when it comes to cameras, so I hope it's not garbage. I'm gonna find that out too. It also has, it has Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Um, I think it's power over Ethernet, which would be cool. And then I think I can get it connected to uh, my setup here and connected to Home Assistant. I, I would really like to be able to access them through the Apple like Home Kit or Home App or whatever they call it. I'm gonna give it a shot with this camera done a bunch of research and a bunch of other cameras. This is what I figured out so far is the, the best bang for the buck and one that actually does what I want it to do. So um, let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so it's nighttime now, but back onto the next step of this. So before I even do anything with the camera, I guess still got the camera just sitting over here and I haven't really plugged anything in. Eventually I'll plug it in down here in the network and, and we'll try it out, but I really gotta get to the software first. So let me tell you a little bit how I got here. I watched this video. This was, this is the video that actually like set me off on this and I'll probably actually record the screen instead of pointing this camera at the screen. But anyway, video by Techno Tim. I had never seen this before in my life, but it was very straightforward. Meet scripted, stream any camera to any home hub. So I looked it up. High performance home video integration platform. And it, essentially it's, it is exactly what, what it says it is. It lets you take many, many, many different webcams or other cameras and then connect them to HomeKit, Google Home, and Alexa. I tried to connect my other cameras to it, the, the cameras that I've talked about before. I'm not even gonna mention their name. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will mention the name later. I don't remember what they're called right now, but they're crap and you can't connect them to this thing. I think it's gonna solve my problem. Then I specifically looked in the documentation here and this camera is in the documentation is being supported. So the next thing to do is get this installed. One of the very first things it says is that Proxmox VE is the recommended installation, and lucky me, I already have Proxmox running, again, over here on this little box. That that little mini server right there is running Proxmox. It's running Home Assistant and nothing else right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. So it ends up getting this setup was actually way easier than I thought it was. So if I go to the server, you can see that there is scripted installed and, uh, and, and Home Assistant. Really, the entire setup is honestly, what you find here in the documentation for scripted. This is the script. Um, don't just copy and paste this entire thing, run it line by line. Um, so, you know, obviously the first line and the second line, and then this bash command, I did run into one problem and honestly, not that big of a deal. It might actually work for you. If you're running Proxmox on a different setup, it probably will. But for me, it, through a fit about the disk that it was trying to go to, because apparently there's a default one, and then I have a, a secondary volume that it needed to be installed on. So that was actually really easy because it even recommended exactly what command I needed. So I'll just go back to the shell here and show you. Um, if I just go back in the history, you can see it. it's right here. Bash install scripted proxmox h and dash dash storage uh, local LVM. So this is the name of the storage on that device. So here it is. Um, it's up and running. I've already installed some plugins. Uh, you can see here I have the HomeKit plugin, I have the Onviv camera plugin, I have um, Tapo uh, plugin, which is the camera I have, but the Tapo plugin is really just for the audio portion of the of the the Tapo setup. You're going to use Onviv if you're using um, if you're using one of these Tapo cameras, and that's actually over. here. Here. So here's where I found this camera. It's right here on the scripted website. They recommend it, Tapo C310. And uh, like I said, cheap, $29.99. I don't think you can do a whole lot better than that unless you're gonna try to make your own. Believe me, I tried that too. But a lot of these little cameras, uh, like for example, uh, ESP32 cam, 
I know that's like the cheapest, dirtiest camera you can buy, but I, it doesn't work for, for this very well. You got to figure out at some point where you're like, okay, it's not worth the amount of effort I'm going to put into this when I could just spend $30. The software's here. I'm going to plug the hardware in. We're going to do that in just a second. Okay. You are now attached to my head. Um, let's get this thing going. So uh, this is cool. This is like waterproofing or weatherproofing stuff for the, for the network cable. So I will be using that when I eventually take this outdoors. I hope you can see this. And first time using this camera with it sitting on my head like this, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're going to plug this in into any one of these ports, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and get this over here. Nice long power cord, by the way, if you're actually looking for something like this. Um, get this plugged in, and it turned on. Okay, so I think that's the best I can ask for at this point. All right, now I got the camera plugged in, so let's just take a look here and see what I can figure out. I decided, like, if I just go here and discover, <laughs> Look at that. That makes it really easy now, doesn't it? Uh, this is the camera right here. So let's hit plus. Uh, oh, username and password. Okay. Uh, let's just Google it. Okay. So I got to install the app anyway. I'm willing to make that concession as long as it's just for the setup. Give it a shot. Hello, it's Gary from the future. So it took me like 30 minutes to figure all that out. And since it's probably the reason you started watching this video, I'm not going to make you suffer through watching me suffer through. First, yes, you do absolutely need to install the stupid Tapo app to make all this work. It's not necessary after the initial setup, but it is necessary. So here's what to do. Go ahead and go through the camera setup like normal. You're gonna need the whole connect to Wi-Fi, select your network, song and dance, and then the camera should appear in the app. After you get that out of the way, select the camera on the main app screen and then tap the settings icon in the corner that for some reason isn't a gear. I have no idea why. Next, scroll down, tap advanced settings, then tap camera account. You're gonna to need to set a username and a password. This is the local username and password you're going to use for connecting to the local stream from the camera. And then go ahead and save those settings. Now, before you leave the app, go back one screen, scroll to the top, and tap Device Info. Write down the IP address. You're going to need that. Now, you're done with the Tapo app forever, if you choose. Now, onto the computer. Open up Scripted, make sure you have the OnVIF plugin and the HomeKit plugin installed. Next, on the OnVIF plugin settings, click Add New, and you'll be prompted for four values. First one is the username. Just go ahead and use that from the Tapo app. The second is the password, again, from the Tapo app. Third is the IP address of the camera, which you just wrote down a minute ago, right? And finally, the port, which is 2020 for this camera. After you add that stuff, click Create, and watch the magic happen. Okay, that was the struggling part. <laughs> now back to pass. Hey, all right. There it is. That was all it was. Okay, so. Oh yeah, totally worked. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> and the audio is coming through twice. Because the camera has the audio. All right, extensions. I want to add HomeKit. So, HomeKit. There's the HomeKit. Probably have to blur that because, you know, add accessory. Cool. Add to home. Add anyway. All right. Oh, ho, ho. yeah. Got it. All right. Excellent. It works. So the next step is to take this camera and after I pin the IP address to it, take it out to the barn and plug it in where it'll still be jank. By the way, I figured out this thing is not power over ethernet. I'm gonna have to put little words all over this entire video to, to show you that where I said it earlier. But I might be able to get a PoE active injector, which essentially will just take one ethernet cable in and then power and ethernet comes out and goes into this, that, that'll, that'll save me. I might also try the wireless. I mean, I have Wi-Fi in the barn. We'll see how it goes. Let's take this jumble of wires and head on out there. Welcome to my barn. I don't know if this channel's ever been out to my barn. I think I'm going to put it just over here for now. Um, since this is all just temporary, I've got my network box, so I've got access to a network jack. Um, 
kind of looks like I'm going to have to put a screw in there just to, just temporarily. Uh-oh. I've got guests. Set this down for a second. Get a screw in over here. Here. Good. Here. Yes. Get the network cable connected. Yeah, sure can. Okay. And then like this. Okay, so now it's connected. <laughs> Look at that. Quite impressive. Let's see. Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty good. I think my next video is going to be a little more DIY installer style because I'm going to try to run, get a few more of these cameras, run the cables, get the PoE splitter injector thingies, and then uh, get this all wired up with these new cameras. Talk to you later.